Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and this video is to show you how I recover a really nice piece of wood after a botched job. So I have two botched jobs here. And the first one is this one. <laughs> it may not look very botched, but it is. I designed this up and I did it in V-Carve, and I had a couple of problems here. One was the V-bit that I was using to cut everything out was not very good. It was a cheap bit. I used it for practice when I was getting the CNC, and so I've had to reinvest in a much better 60-degree uh, bit. But if you take a look at my lights and my cuts here, they look like shit. And the reason is, is because this is an imported vector that I, I created from a, a bitmap, and I didn't edit up the vector. So it had lots of nodes in it. And nodes are the transition points that your program is going to uh, make us changes. And I did this with a ball mill, or a round, round bit, rounding bit, half inch. And what it did, it literally tried to V-carve with that bit and made those light bulbs look like hell. And this is a really nice piece of oak. And I re-ran my job and did some more stuff on the other side. And that came out really nice. So I really want to keep this piece of oak and I would want to keep it anyway. The second job I have that I botched is this little advertisement sign I made for the products that I make. And so the lumber I use is literally straight off the farm. It, we mill it and uh, my brother's farm, I have to put in that little disclaimer in there. But uh, I, uh, this is a piece of walnut and the letters, even though they're nice and deep and really nice text, and this took about 40 minutes to engrave using the 20 degree bit I used, 30 degree bit. And so I wanted to highlight the letters, so I spray painted the thing after I spray painted it, uh, sprayed it with urethane. But you can see that the paint got into the grain. I kind of knew that in the bottom of my heart, and I put the coat on way too much. When I tried to sand it off, it just came out like this. And I mean, the, the white and the grain, it looks kind of cool, but I want this to be the, the, the true color of the wood and then make the letters stand out. And that was the problem. They weren't standing out. So what we're going to do on both of these projects is we are going to literally cut all that away. Uh, on this part, I'm going to cut the way the level of the paint. So I'm going to take very shallow facing cuts across this entire part. And this one I'm going to take quite a, uh, quite a bit off because I think this goes almost a quarter inch deep for that V-carve. We'll find out. And the way I'm going to do this is use a facing tool. So I've got a one and an eighth inch bit that I really like. It's got nice sharp corners. It's a true 90, so it's good for side milling. I'll even put a link down below in, the, uh, in my description where I got this from Amazon. And I really recommend this bit. So I'm going to take a .01 off the surface of this. So let's dive into V-Carve, and I will show you how to set this up properly so it generates the tool paths in the right way. All right, we are in V-Carve, and I have set up this material so that I can do this. Now you'll notice, first of all, it's oriented in a funny way, and I do that so I can look at it the way I want to on the machine. So we set up our size, two and a quarter by 14. Now the thickness doesn't matter because we're taking off such a thin amount of material. And on the datum position, we want to get to our lower left corner when we're doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw some vectors. And here's what I want to do so you're really clear. I'm going to bring the tool on this side of the part, which is near the zero point, the zero point being right here at the corner. I'm going to bring the tool right down here. And it's going to start to come up. Then it's going to pull away. It's going to wrap it back over here, feed back down, cut another lane, and just keep doing that. 
Now the last one, I want it to come the other way. And the reason is that I want to do a climb. The tool is basically turning like this as it's moving along. And so that's keeping the corner of the board or the edge of the board nice and tight. I want this last one to be doing the same thing. So it has to go the other way. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, we got to set up this tool the right way. First thing I'm going to do is create construction lines. Since I'm going to uh, pick this point right here using the line function. Now my snap is turned on so it would pick up that corner. And the snap is up here, by the way, at least in V-Carve. So I'm going to come over and come down, and this tool is an inch and an eighth in diameter. So I'm going to type in 1.125 divided by 2 and enter. And now it created the diameter of the tool divided by tool. So the edge of the tool is just going to come down uh, right at the edge of the material. Now I'm going to come over just a little bit more just to keep things clear. So I'll do 1.125 and enter. And then I'm just going to come all the way across. Now I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. So we are just going to go there. We're going to come over, come up. Let's just come up by one. And that way we know we've taken care of the entire diameter of the tool. And just to verify, we are going to grab a circle. Then the circle is 1.125 in diameter. And I'm just going to draw it right there. And look, so I got plenty of material, plenty of room to work with. Uh, that one's a little closer, so let's just double check. So the tool is going to come down uh, before it hits the material. So that's exactly what I want. All right, so now we are going to create our lines. So I'm going to start the line at this side of the material. So this is my zero point. So I want to do it on the zero point side. And you can see where the line is starting. I'm going to go straight up the edge. So the center of the tool is going to pass right along the edge and just come up there. Now we have our tool path set up. And then I'm going to step it over as we go along. And the way we're going to do that is escape out of here. And we are going to array this line. So in V-Carve, it's down in offset and layout. And we're going to select this guy right here, which is an array. And... I want you to know that th these are in columns. Columns obviously are up and down, rows are side to side. So I want to do multiple columns. I don't need any cross over that way or cuts that way, so I don't need rows. So just the one row that exists. So on rows, we're going to have one, and columns, we're going to have seven. The line is selected right now. It's showing in pink. So the First lines are picking up that data. So the line right now is 15.8875 long. That first line just picks up that kind of information. Now we are going to do an offset, and we want this to offset in the x direction. The side to side is x, not in the y direction. So I'm just going to leave the y where it's at right now. And in x, I'm going to go half of the tool. So I'm going to type in 1.125 divided by 2 equals, and that'll set up the diameter of the tool, uh, half the, the radius of the tool. And I'm just going to copy this, those vectors and close that. So you see we've got seven vectors because that's how many I just said. So I don't need the last two, so I'm just going to delete those. And I'm going to get rid of the tool. I don't need that there either. Okay. Now to confirm that or ver make my machine go in the direction I want, we have to see what it's doing. So we're going to highlight this and push the N button for node. And you see these green tabs pop up. Those are start points on the line and then it's got the arrow and that's pointing in the direction that the tool is going to go. Now, like I said before, I want this to be going the other way on the other edge. So what I'm going to do is Come up to the other node on this line and right click. And I'm going to say make start point. And now that point has turned green, the arrow is the other way. So now our tool is going to take these four lines and move up the part. And the last one is going to come down. Let's generate our tool path. So we're going to go over to tool path function. And we are going to go into profile tool path. And we're going to set our depth. So I'm going to go down to 0 0.01 and the tool is set up a 1.1 uh, and an eighth. Let's just take a look at the feed rate. 
and it says 50 which is what I want a nice high feed rate it's a big tool so and it's doing a cleanup and it's not taking off much material we need to make sure our uh, vector is on the line and we're doing conventional cutting and I want to do a climb cut the climb cut is basically it is rolling up like that but we're going to make sure it's doing the climb cut in the direction that I want it to go when you're doing it on a line sometimes it wants to go in the wrong direction we're going to pick the lines in the order that we want so I click the first one then I just shift hold shift down and keep selecting the vectors consecutively so now this should be cut one cut two cut three four and five and let's generate this tool path and make sure I, the climb is the right direction that the machine is going to generate the tool path on and so we calculate and I'm going to slow the speed down on the cut and tell it to generate the cut now you see it's not going in the direction I want it to go so I am going to change that to a conventional cut if you're cutting just uh, for your information if you're cutting on the outside right inside left uh, this is going to be much easier to determine what it's going to do the climbing conventional I'm not going to discuss that in this video I'm going to click calculate and redo this so I'm going to slow the speed down and now it's calculating and I have to reset that because there we go all right, one that's going in the right direction that I want to go in so far. And then you see it came around and did the last one in the opposite direction. So we are good. So we're going to save this toolpath and run it. A couple points I want to make out here is as I'm zeroing the tool on the surface, I don't want to zero like at a corner here, like bring the machine to X0, Y0. I want to zero the lowest cutter point and so I'm just going to use all three cutter points and bring my paper, uh, tool down onto my paper. The position is set. Now fortunately my machine is still set to the zero point since this was the last job I did. Uh, if you were to set your zero point otherwise you'll have to eyeball it so let's just run this out and see what she looks like okay so obviously I have to bring my Z down just a little bit and try it again well I ran the part again and it turned out really nice I the the white there it actually does more than I thought it would with the stain I did have to re-engrave the lower text but all in all this is stained now and that's what it looks like. Uh, again, that link to that facing bit is down below uh, where you can get that off of Amazon. It's very reasonably priced and, and I really like it. Um, one thing was my feed rates were a little bit low on that. I needed to go a bit faster, but you're going to see that in just a moment uh, where <laughs> I actually had some burn on the material uh, because I was going too slow. So if this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate a comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I do videos like this all the time. This is Garrett, and happy CNC.